Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Ellsworth. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be going backwards, okay? So before I would give you some names and you would tell me what the formula is like silver nitrate and you would come up with the silver ion, the, the nitrite, oh there's a three missing there, the nitrate ion and then you would go and do the switcheroo and, and bippity boppity boo it looks great, right? And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be giving you the formulas, okay, like this one. I'll give you the formula and then you've got to give me what the, the name of it is. Okay, I'll show you a way how it's not so bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this. So let me come up with a couple here. So I've got this one. So we just named the two ions. So here we go. What's this, the name of this ion right here? Be calcium. Okay, what's the name of this ion here? Hydroxide. Not so bad, is it? Okay, let's look at this one. We'll name this ion here, and it's going to be magnesium. Again, double check and make sure that you're using the correct um, letter choice here by looking up these different ions, right? Okay, and what's the name of this one? And you'd look it up. It's on the first row of your purple polyatomic ion chart, and that would be acetate. Okay, not so bad. Okay, here's some more. Okay, so right here is what's the name of this ion right here? Be aluminum. Okay, and this one right here just be chloride. Okay, a reminder when it's on the periodic table that the last one is the negative ion, it has to end in an IDE. Okay, now iron's a little bit different. If you remember right, it is a transitional metal that's got more than one charge on it. Okay, it's got two, three, and six. Okay, so you have to tell your reader which one that this one is. So what is the charge of that thing? Okay, well, remember that's the one understood. So there's a negative one, there's a positive two, isn't it? So it's going to be iron two chloride. So if this would have been a six here, it would have been iron six chloride because you unswitch it and you'd have a plus six. If this have a three here, you'd unswitch it. This would be a plus three, and you'd have to have a Roman numeral three. Okay, not so bad. You just got to remember those transition metals. They, um, you can't forget those Roman numerals because you got to tell your reader which ion that it is, is in that formula. Okay, so, so let's look at a couple more with just the, the harder ones here with the Roman numerals. So here is copper. Okay, and we'll unswitch it. There's a negative one and a positive two. So this would be copper two. And then fluoride. Okay, and notice this one. Negative one and a positive one. So this would be copper one fluoride. Okay, so you have to tell your reader which one it is because this does make a difference in what it is. Okay, here's one that I think is much more difficult. Me personally, this is what I think. Now, notice when this one went up here, it was a negative one. And when you look up fluoride, it is a halogen, so it will have a negative one charge. Again, here too. Now look at this one. This is a one understood and a one understood, right? So negative one, and you look up sulfur, and sulfur is actually a negative two. It's actually a negative two. So what happened here? Well, what would make it to be a one-to-one -one ratio? What would make a one-to-one -one ratio here? It'd be a plus two. So this is actually copper two sulfide. Okay, and I honestly feel like that this is the hardest one because you gotta recognize, well, what is this chart supposed to be over here? Like our here it was supposed to be a one because fluoride is a one. But sulfide, sulfide is not a one when you do the switcheroo. And so you have to recognize, hey, what was the one to one ratio in this case right here? Because they reduced it, right? So if I would have given you this name, you would have put a Cu plus two and an S with a negative two, and you would have reduced it. Okay, and that's what we've been doing all this time. Okay, so 
So don't let, let, let them freak you out. You know, you could go and, and look at these two different ways. Now, copper can be a two or a one. When you go look on your periodic table, it could be a two or a one. If it was a Cu and it was a plus one and S would be a negative two, you could go back and do it backwards because then this would be copper one sulfide. But the thing is that when you bring these numbers down, it's not a one to one ratio like this one was originally. So, I mean, you could go back and, I mean, it's kind of like when you have a math problem. You've got a division problem, so you can go and multiply it later on to figure out your answer, make sure you did it right, right? So it's those type of things, like an opposite operation. Okay, so we're going to move to a different subject now. And we're going to talk about ionic versus covalent. In fact, I have a slide way back there that we've already done. Let me go. Okay, so do you remember this right here a long time ago? We talked about ionics, how ionics always start with a metal and covalents start with a non-metal. Okay, we also talked about that this bond, you know, what happens is that one ion steals electron or electrons from the other ion, and then they've got a really strong attraction between a positive and negative ion. Okay, when we made our formulas, we switched those numbers. We did the switcheroo. Now with covalents, they're going to share electrons and there is no switching. We use prefixes to describe them. So let me show you. Let me pause it and get, okay, so we switched, no switching. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Now on your purple polyatomic ion chart, you've got one a lot like this. It only goes down to 10 and that's fine. I'll never do anything more than 10. But anyway, so what we do is that in our formula, we say how many P's we have. We've got three P's. Three phosphoruses, three stands for tri, so it's triphosphorus. Okay, and how many oxygens do I have? I have got eight, which is octa, and then oxide. Oops, O X I D E. Now the the last word, okay, these are always two words, right? The last one will always end in I D E, even though there isn't a negative ion here. It'll always end in IDE. Okay, let's look at this one. Maybe you want to pause it and try it yourself first. Okay, we've got two nitrogens, so two means di, so di nitrogen, di nitrogen, and then three is tri, tri, oops, T R I, and then oxide. Okay, trioxide. Okay, again, this tell me I got two nitrogens, two nitrogens. I've got three oxygens, three oxygens. So notice that I'm not doing any kind of switching numbers on this. So don't do anything crazy like that. Just it's telling you exactly how many that you've got of each one. Okay, this is the prefix telling you the number of it. It's not telling you what the charge is or anything like that, so you can switch them around. No, 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 no. Okay. So why don't you look at this one? Oh, wait, let me go over this one. Okay, this one does not have a number here, so it's a one understood, and we do not write mono on the first one. Okay, so it'll just be carbon. However, we do write mono for the second one of any of these formulas. Okay, so this has got one oxygen, so it's going to be monoxide. We kind of take off an O there, monoxide. Okay. If you had a dye, uh, three, three iodines, it would still be triiodide, but for some reason monoxide we don't, okay? Sometimes that, that extra little vowel there at the end, sometimes they're there and sometimes they're not, they're usually there. I won't ever freak out if you've got an extra vowel in there from the end of one of these, okay? Okay, so this one again, it's, um, it only has one there, but we don't put mono in the first one, so it's just carbon. And now it's two oxygen, so it's going to be dioxide. Okay, it's two, the last two I'm sure you've heard of before. Okay, let's go and do it this backwards now to where I give you the name, and then you've got to write out the formula. Okay, so one carbon, so that'd be just C tetrachloride. So we've got some chlorines. Let's figure out how many. We've got tetra. Tetra means four. CCl4. Dihydrogen. Okay, so that means two hydrogens. H2. Okay, di means two. Okay, mono means one. So just one sulfur. Again, 
Notice how they named them with the last one with an IDE, but not the first one. So, so just more confirmation of that knowledge from the previous page. Okay, try this one. So go ahead and pause it and try that. Okay, so sulfur, there's penta sulfur. So penta is five, so five sulfurs. And then di means two phosphoruses. So P2. That's it. That's all there is to this. Pretty nice stuff, isn't it? Okay, you don't do any kind of switching. You um, just, it tells you straight out, two hydrogens, one sulfur. Okay, so um, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.